Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, how to brew Sencha green tea. This is a very commonly asked question for us, and I think the reason for that is because Sencha green tea, more than most tea types, is a very, very fussy tea. What I mean by that is that small shifts in brewing parameters will give you wildly different experiences in the cup. And so having the foundational knowledge about how to approach these kinds of teas, I think is important in order for you to be able to brew with instinct and intelligence to get the right balance of taste and effect for you. Right. Why is Sencha green tea so fussy? Well, first of all, it's because it's a green tea and green teas are made with young tender leaves that are very high in caffeine and catechins. And caffeine and catechins have a bitterness about them. And so these young tender leaves are very readily extractable. And if you overbrew or you mess up the sort of timing or temperature, then you can get an overly bitter or an aggressive brew. Now, whilst that bitterness is a desirable feature, you want to be able to control it and attenuate it to your palate. Secondly, Sencha green tea goes through quite an extended rolling phase, usually mechanical rolling. If you want to check out how Japanese green tea is made, I'll put a link in the description below. But it goes through this, this extended rolling phase to really sort of um, bring out all of the uh, inner leaf material and sort of break the, the inside of the leaf so that it makes a very concentrated brew. If you also have uh, a tea which is being steamed a little bit longer, like in the case of Fukumushi teas, then you're going to get this very glossy needle-shaped leaves, but you're going to have this broken effect, depending on the steaming and depending on the amount of rolling. But it's not uncommon for very high quality, um, top shelf sensors to have this broken leaf look. And that means that it's going to brew in a very quick way. It's going to extract very readily to make very concentrated brews, which is why every single drop of Japanese green teas like Sencha's or Gyokuro's count. Also, I have to say that Japanese tea culture is all about cultivating intensity in flavor in these leaves. So just the whole process from, from growing to picking to processing is all about, uh, is all designed around trying to get very concentrated, intense, impactful brews. And that means that you have less uh, margin for error again when you are brewing because can extract in such a concentrated way that when you mess it up, you really, really notice it. Let me introduce you to the tea that we're going to be using today. This is new in. This is our Yame Sayamidori Sencha. Let's quickly scope this tea. Season, this is actually first pluck. So not just first flush shincha. This is first pluck, the first pluckings of the year in April 2020. I know I'm speaking to you from October, so it's a bit insane that it's taken us so long to get this tea um, on the shelves. Let me just say that COVID-19 really impacted our logistics on this shipment. But anyway, it's here. First pluck tea, really, really the top, top pluckings of the year. Cultivar is the Sayamidori cultivar, which is a lovely, lovely cultivar. Really, really great early flushing uh, cultivar uh, combination across between, between the Asatsuyu cultivar and the Yabukita cultivar. Origin, this is from Yame in Fukuoka in Japan. We've been searching for Yame tea for a while now, especially spurred on recently to a trip to New York where we tasted a sublime Yame tea, so we really had to find one. Yame is a historic, it's one of the most historic prefectures of tea cultivation in Japan and we really wanted to get our hands on some Yame tea so I'm super happy we finally found this tea. Picking and processing, interestingly this is shade grown for two weeks so very similar to Gyokuro. Yame is very famous for their Gyokuro teas so they've adopted some of this Gyokuro a technique to shade grow this uh, sencha tea. And that means it's gonna bring out even more theanine, even more of that brothy, uh, umami, thick, luxurious nature. 
So this has been shade grown for a couple of weeks and then it will go through the standard uh, processing for Sencha. Again, if you want to check out a video, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below, but it will be picked, it will be um, withered, it will then go through a steaming phase um, to uh, fix the leaf, it will then go through various stages of rolling, it will then go through a heating, drying and roast, light roasting phase and uh, then it will be sorted. So that's the picking and processing, elevation is around 50 meters. Okay, so what we're gonna do first of all is I'm going to be testing out what temperature and time does on Accenture. And really those are the two parameters that I think you should be focused on. Um, I personally think that the leaf to water ratio is, is for me, similar to Gong Fu Brewing, so a lot of leaf to water ratio I think is a good idea. More leaf to water ratio will always mean a richer brew. So we're gonna be using about four and a half grams for every 100 mil of water. And I wanna test out really the two parameters that you have under your control the most and have the biggest effect are temperature and time. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be brewing um, two sets of the same censure at 70 degrees Celsius, one for 30 seconds and one for a minute. And then we're gonna be upping the temperature to 90 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna be brewing for the same amount of times, 30 seconds and 60 seconds. So 70 for half a minute and a minute, 90 for half a minute and a minute. We'll be right back to taste those brews. Here we are, here are the brews. I need to get on with it quite quickly because of the fact that like all teas, but especially with these very concentrated green teas, the teas are constantly reacting to the air, reacting to the environment, and they're changing. You can see a color difference. Let me just pour some out. So this is 70 degrees, 30 seconds, 70 degrees for 60 seconds, 90 degrees for 30 seconds, and 90 degrees for a minute. There are some differences in color. You can see that the hotter and longer definitely seems more yellow. The cooler, just in general, cooler, cooler temperature is seeming to preserve more of the green uh, color. These ones look slightly more um, yellow, a little bit, they're all vibrant, vibrant color, beautiful colors, but a little greener on this side and definitely more concentrated with longer brew. So that one is the greenest and darkest in terms of color. Right, now we're gonna be assessing the teas on the following factors. The thickness of the tea, so the, the, the feeling of thickness, the voluptuousness in the mouth, the texture, which is slightly different. So this is more about the physical feeling after you've swallowed, how it leaves your mouth, and if there's any astringency. The next thing is we'll assess the, the bitterness level. Then we'll also assess the EQ of the taste, so generally what the sort of taste balance is. We'll also assess the length of the finish, so how long it lasts, and we're gonna be talking about body sensation, but I'm obviously not gonna be assessing that here. Right, let's begin. As I said, I wanna move quite quickly so that they don't change too much. So 70 degrees, wow. I'll talk about the tasting notes a little bit later, but very, very brothy, very, very savory to sweet, soft and thick, but that is thicker. A similar flavor profile, um, very savory, very rich, um, getting a little bit more of those um, lemony yuzu style notes as well, but thick, soft, and um, umami rich, brothy, and this one is thicker than this one. Right, let's taste the 90 degrees. Like a different tea altogether. Still got that brothiness, still got that savoriness. And remember, it is shade grown, so it's gonna be very rich in theanine. So, at 90, you're still getting that, but I'm getting a distinct um, edgier taste profile to it. It um, has a, the same sort of thickness to this one here, but because of the fact that I'm getting more dryness on my tongue after I've swallowed, I'm getting more astringency. Again, not necessarily a good or a bad thing, up to your taste, but because of that, there is a sort of sense that it's thinner. 
if you know what I mean, because the thickness moves to dryness, you sort of have a sense of a thinner um, tea, even though actually when you look, when you actually just focus on the thickness while the tea is in the mouth, it is the same. And this one here, okay, again, it has, it is thicker than this one. So length of time definitely increases thickness, but it also is more astringent. And I'm picking up a little bit of bitterness now, more bitterness coming through on that brew. Let me give them another taste. And then we're gonna be talking about each factor here. So 70 degrees, 30. After you taste it back to back from this one, the difference in the uh, texture is very, very apparent. Much, much softer. Hardly any bitterness, if any at all. Same with that one, very, very soft but co more concentrated in flavor. This one, definitely drier, a little bit of bitterness. And finally, much more bitter and thicker, but because of that extra astringency, it has a sense of thinness about it. There are three main factors here or three main compounds in this leaf which is affecting this uh, balance in my mouth. The first is theanine. Theanine is that amino acid which contributes to a brothy, thick, savory, sweet uh, taste. So texture is thicker, texture is softer, um, the taste is going to be more umami, more savory and moving to sweet. And also theanine is that amazing amino acid which crosses the blood-brain barrier and makes you feel happier, right? It affects your dopamine levels. The second is catechins, the antioxidant in uh, green tea. And catechins have a bitter note to them, but they also bring about astringency, dryness. And so the drying sensation and the slight bitterness that's coming out is primarily from the catechins in this tea. The third is caffeine. Caffeine is a methylxanthine, which again contributes to bitterness and potentially some astringency. And so you've got this interplay between the theanine on one side and the antioxidants, the catechins and the caffeine on the other side. And what you're trying to do when you're brewing uh, centers or green teas in general is to try to get the right balance um, of those three uh, compounds for the right level of flavor and texture. Now, of course, there are other compounds, especially the terpenes and the volatile aromatics, which affect the flavor. But I want to really sort of simplify it. Theanine, antioxidants, catechins, and caffeine. So the key driver that determines the extraction level of those compounds is temperature. Caffeine and catechins require higher temperature in order to extract, whereas theanine requires lower temperature in order to extract. And the simple way to, to sort of imagine it is 70 degrees is sort of um, fine for releasing and extracting theanine, so you're gonna get soft, rich, brothy brews, um, and you're not gonna extract much of the antioxidants and the caffeine, whereas when you get the temperature up close to around 90 degrees, that is when the caffeine and the uh, catechins start to extract more readily, especially the catechins, which again, bring about that astringent note. So let's talk about those main tasting markers again. So first of all, thickness. Well, let's really put thickness and texture together because they are related. Thickness will increase, so you'll get thicker, uh, more, viscous brew if you brew for longer and if you brew at hotter temperatures. However, the second factor, the texture, the astringency plays its part here because as you brew hotter, because you're uh, extracting more of those antioxidants, you are also therefore increasing the astringency and that gives a sense of dryness which 
sort of gives you the illusion that the tea is less viscous. Moving on to bitterness, clearly that is controlled by temperature. So higher temperatures are going to mean more bitterness. So you need to sort of work to find the right sweet spot to get that right balance for you. Right, let's move on to taste EQ. And of course, that is a matter of preference again. Generally, if you brew hotter, even though you are bringing out more of those astringent catechins, overall, the EQ of the tea will taste more bassy. You'll lose a little bit of the top, top volatiles because those top bright volatiles, they're gonna evaporate quicker or dissipate quicker with higher temperatures. Um, similarly, the longer you brew for, the more of that uh, dissipation of those bright aromatics. And so if you want very bright, light teas, you're gonna be brewing cooler and shorter. If you want more deep, basier, and more concentrated flavor, then you're going to be brewing longer and hotter. Next up is length of finish. Longer and hotter brews will always extract more and therefore you're gonna have more intensity of the length of finish. And finally, body sensation. Well, judging by the fact that this tea here tastes very brothy, whereas this tea here tastes has more astringency, what you can say is that the balance on the hotter brews are going to be more a balance of extracting everything. So you're gonna get the feel good feeling of theanine, but you're also gonna be getting the energy of the uh, caffeine. Whereas with the uh, cooler brewing, you're gonna be just having more of the theanine because it extracts at lower temperature anyway, but less of the caffeine. And therefore for body sensation, if you want a more gentle feel good feeling, then go for cooler temperature, if you want something that is um, feel good, but also quite energizing and quite, you know, stimulating, then go for hotter brews. So if you wanna break it down in a more memorable fashion, let's focus on temperature first. If you brew cooler, you're gonna have sweeter, seemingly thicker, uh, more um, umami, more brothy brews with more maintenance of those high bright aromatics. Whereas as you increase temperature, you're gonna get more of a refreshing, quenching brew that has more structure, more bitterness, more astringency, and more energy, more of an energizing feeling. If you look at time, shorter brews will mean that you get lighter and brighter flavored tea, whereas as you increase the uh, time, you're gonna get stronger, deeper, more concentrated brews with added thickness, but slightly more basier notes to it. And so this is the kind of foundational knowledge that you need when you're approaching brewing Sensor Green Teas to get the right brew for you. And let me show you my sort of default go-to starting point for Sensor Green Teas so that you have a benchmark that is suited to my taste, not necessarily your taste, but suited to my taste. So what I'm looking for is I'm, in, in Centre Green Teas, I'm looking for softness, sweetness, umami, um, those bright high aromatics. Um, I'm looking for all of that to sort of take priority. And then I wanna sort of back it up with enough astringency, enough bitterness and enough energy and enough structure and length of finish so that it's, it has um, this sort of backbone behind it that I enjoy, but not too much. I like the focus to be more on that brothy sweet and high bright aromatics. And so my default brewing parameters, which I'm gonna show you right now, um, are more swinging towards that side. So if you prefer something to be a little bit more structured and a bit more intense and a little bit basier and a little bit more astringent, then feel free to adapt this technique. Let me reset this and we'll be right back to show you my default censure brewing method. So first of all, we're using 4.5 grams per 100 mil of water. So for this Q, so I've got seven grams of leaf here. 
And the first thing that I'll do is I'll take a look at the leaf and I'll see how broken the leaf is. You can see here with this Yame Sayo Midori, it is fairly broken, sort of half-half. It's not quite Fukumushi style broken, but it certainly is more broken than a lot of censures. Again, that's part of the whole processing, that's how it's made. It doesn't have a reflection on the quality of the tea. So if it is Fukumushi censure or if it's broken up like this, then I will be using temperature water at the beginning of 70 degrees. If I see that it's whole leaf, so it's, it's much more sort of whole leaf than this, then I'll increase it to 75 degrees. This is my default starting point. I will obviously adapt according to the tea and how it tastes. But 70 degrees for Fukumushi and broken, 75 degrees for full leaf, we're going to warm up the tea ware. That's very, very, very important with um, these fine margin teas. You want to make sure you get consistency of temperature. The color of these leaves, lovely sort of deep, deep forest pine green leaves. And we're going to um, go through a tasting of this. And I should actually have my stopwatch ready. And this is one of the teas that, you know, yes, I always say brew by instinct, but at least at the beginning, a stopwatch is a good idea just sort of to get your feel because we are going to be brewing for extended brewing times. So my preference here is to try to max out the thickness and brothiness of a tea. Um, and uh, so we're reducing temperature, extending the time. So you can see here how much leaf I've got. You can obviously adapt it. You could put more in if you want, but I think that that's a good, healthy dose. Let's quickly smell this. Ah. Oh. Um, I get that vegetable broth, um, sort of parsnips and um, winter melon, savory brothiness with this very sort of candied sweet, sort of like candy floss sweetness over the top. So it's this yin yang of brothy and savory to sweet. And theanine, even though people talk about the umami notes, theanine is also, you know, savory to sweet. And so you get that sweetness as well. Right, we are not rinsing this tea. I do not rinse my Sencha green teas. I go straight in, again, because of the fact that they are so readily extractable, you'll be throwing too much away in the rinse, so I prefer not to rinse it. Also, you know, one of the purposes of rinsing the teas, uh, especially for Chinese teas, is that you sort of discard the broken leaf. Well, censure, a lot of censures, a lot of high quality censures have this broken leaf look anyway, so you, that doesn't really apply. Right, okay, so the first infusion, again, up to you if you want to adapt it slightly, but this first infusion for me is 75 seconds. Ready? I start the timer once I stop pouring and I will pour off usually a few seconds beforehand. Okay, 75 seconds is up. Let's pour this out. Vibrant, vibrant, vibrant color, luminous. And as I said, every single drop counts. So take your time with this. Those last drops are precious. Sometimes I'll sort of flick the leaves back just to sort of see if there's anything left. Okay, I think we're done. Let's have a smell of those wet leaves. Oh. That savory note persists, um, but it's moved into sort of more of a starchy, grainy, sort of barley, um, like cooked barley, not roasted barley. Like um, I, I keep imagining like a, a warming soup with, with barley, split pea, um, but it's also got the sweetness of chestnuts. Wow, check out that color. Okay, so this is my first infusion. 
you can see it looks bright, it looks vibrant, it looks very, very luminous green. Let's give it a taste. So, very concentrated in terms of its look and in terms of its uh, taste, but because we're using the lower temperature, um, the astringency is almost non-existent. There is a slight dryness, just enough for me to feel like I'm drinking tea, that texture of tea, but very, very brothy. Very, um, a great combination of brothy and, uh, and rich and sort of unctuous, but then still maintaining a lot of brightness to the tea because of the lower temperature. Mm. Taste, again, like uh, uh, mouli or daikon broth. Um, I'm getting lemon zests persisting. So one of the, the quality markers that I look for when selecting my censures is that nice, deep, brothy start moving to sweet and lemony finish. Delicious, and what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna get this lovely gentle rewiring of my brain because I'm getting an intense hit of theanine, especially because of the fact that this is a shade-grown censure. And so that's gonna start to stimulate alpha brainwave activity. It's gonna increase my dopamine levels. It's gonna have all sorts of wonderful effects on my brain chemistry. That's gonna put me in an even better mood than I am in right now. And you can literally feel that rewiring happening um, as you drink this tea. I've already obviously had a few brews, so I'm already starting to feel it, but it does happen very, very quickly. So I'm, I recognize that some people maybe think I'm rushing my, my drinking, but you know, I wanna get on to the next extraction so you can see everything without waiting too long. So we've done the first extraction at 70 degrees for 75 seconds. Now the second extraction, because these leaves have already started extracting, it's gonna extract even more readily. So we're gonna reduce the time down to 20 seconds. So I've got the temperature of water correct. So this is a 20 seconds, so quite a radical jump downwards um, in terms of the time. Not pouring directly on the leaf. Start the stopwatch and we'll do a 20 second brew at 70 degrees again. So I'm keeping the temperature the same. If it was a Fuku, I mean, if I had um, brewed at 75 degrees, then I'd keep it at 75 degrees as well. So just keep this temperature the same. I like to not change temperature until the sort of fourth infusion. Again, look how bright, look how vibrant that is. So cooler brewing maintains that greenness, maintains the brightness of the tea. But this is a 20 second extraction and I am feeling that rewiring going on in my head right now. It's the one of the things I love about drinking Japanese green teas, especially shade grown. They are gonna be potent in a very, very enjoyable way. Okay, so let's taste this. 20 second extraction. So immediately you can, you can taste that there's been a shift. And this is one of the things that I need to say, I forgot to say at the beginning, because of the fact that that Sencha green tea is so, uh, has such fine margins and it extracts so readily. If you don't get the right parameters on the first, Infusion, that impacts the second infusion, it impacts the third infusion. The flavors shift so quickly. It's not like a whole leaf Chinese green teas where if you say brew too hot on one infusion, you can just go, oh, I'll brew a bit cooler on the next infusion and you can sort of you know, get the right balance. You can sort of reset things. With, with green teas, with Sencha green teas, once you've started the first infusion impacts quite dramatically the second, the third, and however many infusions you're going to do. And so getting the right plan from the beginning, I think is important. So what I'm the reason I'm saying that is because this tea is 
delicious, but different, very, very different. It's, um, I'm tasting more of the freshness of the tea. So the theanine, the umami brothiness, while still being here in the second infusion, um, is much less than in the first infusion. And that shows you how readily the theanine is ready to extract um, for your first brew. So I'm getting that brothiness, but now I'm getting more structure, more texture. Without increasing the temperature, um, I'm getting more brightness because again, I didn't brew for too long or too hot. I'm getting more herbaceous notes. I'm getting like parsley stalks, um, lemon zests. The brothiness is lighter and it has more of a sweetness to it like a, a, a sweet corn, cooked sweet corn note. So we're moving away from the sort of cooked broth and into the uh, greener, sweeter notes of the tea. And if I had brewed the first infusion hot with 90 degree water, First of all, the first infusion would be less um, of that warm, soft, brothy nature because I'd have had more astringency, but that would have also impacted the balance of this second brew. So the way that I'm um, explaining my uh, parameters is to try to get a good sort of balance of everything out of the tea. Right, so we've done our second infusion. Now third infusion, I'm going to be extending the time. I'm keeping the temperature, but I'm extending the time to around 50 seconds. So that's 50 seconds. It's the, the color is vibrant again, but you're seeing more of the sort of lime green note of the tea. So it's again extracting more of that inner leaf material. You see the leaves really, really extracting very, very quickly. Okay. Maybe could have gone about 10 seconds more, around 50 to 60 seconds. But still, the balance is right. I'm getting enough astringency. I'm getting enough little bit of bitterness there just to keep things uh, exciting and interesting. But I'm still getting the right level to match the residual brothiness that still exists in these leaves. Although a lot of that has been extracted, I don't want to uh, up the temperature at this point to, uh, to overpower the remaining brothiness that's in the tea. Wow, I'm really feeling it now. A nice gentle uplifting sensation. A feel good feeling. Now for me, three infusions of Sencha is sort of your peak time. That's your, your ultimate. You can do more infusions. And if you do more infusions, then I do think you need to up the temperature because the brothiness in this tea um, has largely been extracted. The theanine has largely been extracted. And now you're looking for extracting the, the remaining sort of components of the tea. And that requires, I think, hotter temperature. So I'm gonna increase the temperature to 90. And I would only suggest you doing this if you feel like you want one final energizing brew. And when I say final, of course, please extract your tea as many times as you wish so you can keep going, five, six infusions. But really sort of the valued extractions are those first three. Okay, so that's 90. And I'm gonna be brewing for one minute. Okay. The final fourth infusion of this tea. We're really trying to max it out now. Let's see what we've got. Right now, I'm getting much more of that kick, astringency, dryness. The bitterness is relatively well attenuated. 90 degrees, I think, is the right point here. Um, but 
and picking up more of that vegetal note, more of that um, inner leaf green vegetal note from the tea. It's nice, I like it, but it's no, it doesn't match the first three infusions in terms of taste. A lot drier, a lot more bassy. Um, it has a sort of slight spice to it as well. Herbaceous spice, a bit more pungent in its sort of spiciness, a little bit peppery. Um, in its sort of um, taste. So very interesting, I like it a lot, but I would not want, I would not have wanted that to detract from the rich, brothy nature of the first um, infusions. And as I said, this is gonna have more caffeine, more antioxidants, feeling a little bit more rushy um, as I drink this. Mm. Delicious. You can brew cold these leaves, you could stick them in cold brew, but I don't think it's worth it. I think that really you've done, they've done the work. They've, they've done what they've been cultivated to do, which is produce three or four potent, nice, rich extractions. And I think that that is really what Japanese green tea is designed for. Let's quickly smell the empty Gong Dabe because I do love the smell of an empty Gong Dabe for Sencha, usually very, very candy floss sweet. This is, let it evaporate a little bit. Yeah, I'm getting like strawberry, strawberry gummy sweets, candy floss. Very, very sweet, really, really lovely. Last infusion, last sip. That for me, is the perfect Sencha session, albeit slowed down, of course. I would never drink it that quickly normally. So 70 degrees for broken leaf, 75 degrees for whole leaf. For the first infusion between uh, 75 and 90 seconds. For the second infusion, around 20 to 30 seconds. For the third infusion, we're going back up to around 50 to 60 seconds. And then if you want one last caffeinated kicker, boost up the temperature to around 90 degrees and brew for about a minute. Let me know your Sencha brewing suggestions. This is one of those teas that everyone has their own opinion and they have their own parameters. Of course, as always, you need to brew by instinct. So just use this as your sort of starting point and then adapt as you get to know the tea. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea mags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.